So using two arm is a it is uh, it's a good technique. Many surgeons have used uh, using uh, reducing an arm to save an instrument. But my question is, reducing an arm is you are saving an instrument, but uh, the number of instruments finally using again is three, right? So just to so we also have looked into our data, how we can save cost. We saw that the patient is not staying in the hospital. Now we are almost doing an outpatient procedure. Patient coming in the morning, going in the evening, even for malignancies. We saw the amount of fluids and the other uh, drugs that they're using, the analgesics. It's, everything is coming down to, like, there is an overall cost saving in robotics. And the hospital which I work in, we have a, uh, what do you say, a, blanket price, even if I use three instruments or four instruments, they are not going to charge it on to the patient. So we are having a, I am working in a trust hospital where the robotic surgery is very, very uh, low priced. But still, we try to see whether we can improve the cost. Maybe to the hospital management can benefit. Even if I use four instruments, they are not going to charge the patient extra. But I want the system to be viable so that I can continue operating robotics. So the disadvantage of a two-arm hysterectomy for, especially when you're doing a malignancy surgery, is there is a lot of controversy about putting in a manipulator. When you put in a manipulator, are you compromising the, uh, increasing the cancer spread? And sometimes big uteruses, even if you're doing a benign, it's useful to have one more instrument in, right? Or you, maybe your assistant is doing that. If your assistant is doing that, you need to have a reliable assistant. So when, in my institution, it's a case of rotating postgraduates who are coming, so it's like every two months you are getting a new person. So the getting a reliable assistant is again out of question. So then we thought of, then I thought of changing so that if I, why do I need a needle holder? Why can't I use a progress instead of needle holder to close the vault? Just like holding an artery forceps. So using a progress, it holds well. I'm using the 2-0 V-log suture, uh, the needle, is it's relatively stable in the progress, not as stable as in a needle holder, but yes, stable enough, allowing you to suture it. So this, uh, I've been doing it since the last almost uh, three years now. It goes well, almost uh, the same results that you get with a needle holder, almost the same, maybe it's less, not as beautiful to watch as with a needle holder, maybe. It wobbles a bit, it wobbles, because the grip is not that great. And you have to be very careful that the instruments are not damaged, because you're doing something which is not recommended with an instrument, your instrument should be safe. First use progress, or your bipolar is getting damaged, the rest of the nine uses are not completed again, the hospital is going to come after me. So that also should not happen. So you should be very careful in using your instruments, rotate it pro properly, hold it lightly, don't use too much force. And then, I think you can do a good enough job with the progress. So then I looked into my data so is this technique causing me more complications? Is it really safe and efficacious to use a progress? Because it is going to increase the complications to the patient or it's going to increase an instrument damage, then there is no point in going ahead with this. So I looked into uh, the cuff-related complications and the cuff closure time with the uh, progress. And I included all the patients who have undergone robotic acid hysterectomy from September 2015 to August 2018. I eliminated the learning curve phase because uh, the learning curve anyway, our time data will be more. So I will, it will be an unfair comparison against the needle holder because the learning curve, you're always using the needle holder. So it will be an unfair comparison against the needle holder. So I eliminated the learning curve phase and collected a retrospective data. I had 374 patients in this period with 76 were closed with needle holder and 298 underwent a closure with progress. They had similar baseline characters, um, what, uh, their comorbidities, age, the conditions, everything was similar. Intraoperative parameters, blood loss, all those ba baseline, they were all the same. 
and the average take time taken for the cuff closure was similar between the two groups. This is a chart showing the average time. You see it's, the denominator is slightly different in both, the x-axis is different in both the groups. But you see the time, the y-axis is the same, the time taken is almost the same. Looking at the post-op complications, we looked into whether there was any dehiscence, no dehiscence in both the groups. There were no readmissions. No, uh, there were few patients who came back with post-operative spotting. And uh, there were few patients with uh, vaginal infections discharged from the thing, but there were no dehiscence. But they were comparable across the groups. So vault-related complications and vault, clo vault closure time is similar between the group and you are saving one instrument. There's no other additional cost. One instrument straight is 18,000 rupees for an XI. That's what you're saving with this. But this is limited by this. I've looked into literature, nobody's doing it. I've asked people, nobody's doing it here or in India or in US. <laughs> Till now nobody, initially I was afraid to talk this out loud, thinking whether the company people, are they going to come and bash me up for reducing an instrument, uh, or they'll say that, you see, this is not the recommended, uh, it's not FDA approved, or this is not the recommended thing, so. Uh, so initially I was keeping it very quiet. Then last year I thought, it's a thing which saves money, it saves a lot, why not talk it out loud? So I'm, I've looked into my data, I'm presenting it, the first time I'm presenting it here. So just want to urge all of you here, we have only a few number of robotic surgeons here. Take it up. We look into doing a, we'll make it into a multi-center sort of study. Look into a prospective way. Use needle holder or progress, whichever you feel convenient. We won't randomize the patients. Just look into a prospective observational way. After one year, we look into our results. If you're comfortable using it, I'm not pushing any of you to use it because you will have, each institution has its own differences and you should not be damaging any instrument. So all my instruments, they completed their uh, 10 uses. I was very secretive following, following them up. So by next RSC, we should have a presentation from a multi-center collaboration about progress for vaginal closure. Thank you.